Hey guys, this is Connor from Biker's Edge. I'm out here today in Harriman, Utah, testing out the Orbea Occam. This is the $3,000 model, the H20. Uh, it's part of our $3,000 bike comparison test that we have going on right now. I'm gonna talk you through how it climbs, how it descends, some of the components on it, and uh, should be a good time. <laughs> wants to keep you going fast. All right, so getting started here. The Occam is a 140 mil trail bike. I gotta say it's uh, really efficient. Um, you really feel like pedals naturally. You don't feel any pedal bob. It does a really good job of taking whatever you put into it and, and turning it into speed. And one of the things that I noticed with uh, just how efficient it is, it's really easy to keep a, a consistent pedal stroke going on it. Even when you go over bumps or rocks, um, it doesn't really throw you off your, your cadence. Climbs well enough where I don't think the weight really is an issue. Uh, we'll see how I feel about that as I get closer to the top of this climb. I'm sitting high in the travel. Um, like I said, I don't notice Bob or anything really slowing me down. I think Orbea really wanted this, this bike to climb well. It's got a lot of different components and, and things that kind of make you think that uh, this could be like a 120 mil feeling bike rather than a 140 uh, with the tires the geometry even, but it does have that extra travel in case you need it. So far as you're, as I'm pedaling this, it wants to get up and go. It's a, always a fun feeling. Let's talk about some of the components that Orbea went with. They seem to spec this bike more like a, a trail bike rather than trying to be something that was more burly. You can see that where they spec it with the a little bit faster rolling tires. Max's Recon in the back, high roller in the front, both of which are pretty fast rolling. High roller has a little bit more knobs so you can get some control out of that front still. But a Recon gives you a fast rolling back tire. You feel like you don't have any resistance, as much resistance on the tires. Uh, I'm really impressed with the drivetrain they put on this. They have a mix of Shimano XT and SLX 12 speed. You can see that on much more expensive bikes than $3,000 sometimes. They went with some Fox suspension, 34 up front, DPS in the back, reliable, tried and true. It does feel like this bike's not quite as long for whatever reason. If you look at it on paper, it's it's got a, a long reach, close to 500, I think, for an XL, which is right in line with you know a lot of other bikes. It probably has to do with the steep seat tube angle on this. Uh, I think it's around 77. That just puts you in a, in a nice position over the bike. Orbea decided to not go super slack with this bike. It's uh, still fairly aggressive, but um, not crazy like what you're seeing some companies do. It's a, around 66 degree head tube angle. I feel like still gives you a good amount of confidence if you're descending, but doesn't keep that front wheel out too far in front of you so you can really control the bike when you're climbing still. Coming up on kind of a steep rocky section here. I feel like it's got a lot of potential to kind of go up this no problem with how centered you are in the bike. Yeah, that made it easy. I uh, didn't really have to move my body position when I went up some of that steep stuff. May have not looked steep on the camera, but usually I have to get out of the saddle a little bit, shift my weight, you know, forward. I really didn't have to move my body position. I gotta say, I really enjoy how this bike climbs. Definitely don't feel like I'm riding a 140 29er. Feels more like a 120 bike. A lot of brands will make a 140-ish trail bike and try to make it ride as much as a enduro bike as they can, but I feel like Orbea went the other direction. 140 bike 
so you can have a little bit of extra stuff, but definitely climbs like a trail bike. All right, so I'm getting ready to do the descending portion. Talk about how this thing goes downhill now. So, you know, right away, you know, as I kind of expected, the brakes don't feel quite as as powerful as as I would like. Definitely feel it's a little sketchy going into some stuff where you want to brake a little bit before. It's aluminum bikes just kind of quiet stuff down, make it feel a little buttery. You hear the maybe hear the rear tire skidding there, maybe. Uh, because it's got that faster rolling tread on there. Started skidding a little bit sooner than I maybe anticipated. But so far it feels pretty smooth. I'm liking the aluminum. Getting used to the brakes a little bit, but again, man, I think that's the biggest negative so far. But so far some of the bumpier stuff feels, feels smooth. The bike feels more on the planted side for sure. Definitely uh, the pedaling on it. You know, after you're coming out of a corner, I feel like you can pedal, get back up to speed fairly quickly. It does have that get up and go feeling to it. Like I said, it's feeling more on the planted side. Cool. Um, not really poppy, which is normal for an aluminum bike. I would say it's not quite as springy as a carbon frame would be. Here's some rocky stuff. Yeah, it's keeping the traction so well on that. Man, that felt like nothing. Really, really good. Usually that stuff's pretty, pretty chundery. Feels like you can bounce you around, but again, I don't know if it's the aluminum frame or what. It just feels pretty good when it gets into that rocky stuff. The trail kind of opens up and gets wider here. It's fun to see if the bike can open up a little bit. See how fast it wants to go. Ooh. Oh man, hit my pedal super hard on a rock there. Something I've been kind of struggling with this pedal strikes have the sag set to 30% but it's been striking my pedals a little bit more than I would expect like I've said over and over it does definitely has more of a trail bike feel it's not really opening up quite as much as uh, some other 140 bikes might but it's staying you know comfortable it's staying pretty fast but not not really wanting to open it up to supersonic speeds like some people might want. There's some 14029 ers that can just take off. I think this one's more content to just stay at a comfortable pace. It does accelerate really well after a corner. So it's easy to get up to speed. So I'm not feeling like the bike pushes you to go warp speeds. I just think that means you know, this bike isn't for the the enduro rider, it's for the trail rider. Somebody that wants to have a lot of fun. And just get into something efficient, fast on both ends, but nothing crazy, you know, just a good all around bike. I think uh, that's who this bike is for. Somebody that's looking for an all arounder, something that climbs really well, but also this ends with a nice capability. You got a little bit of forgiveness in the 140 build travel. So I definitely think this can be a, a great all arounder bike for a lot of people, especially at that $3,000 mark. Just climbs so well, descends, you know, really good, um, but not, not something I would recommend for, you know, park days or, you know, a lot of jumps or anything. Don't expect this to be, you know, your your go-to descender, I would say. Um, maybe some upgrades you could do. 
to make it feel more like a descending bike. Better brakes. Again, uh, some of the Orbeas come with a 36 fork 150 option, which would definitely help this bike open up a little bit, gain some speed. This is definitely a bike that somebody can have a ton of fun on, doing a lot of different things. Trail riding, I think you can handle some harder downhill rides. But like I said, not necessarily something you want to take to the park or to, on some jump lines, but man, it's a really good all around trail bike. Hopefully I gave you some good information on the Urbea Occam. It's gonna have been a good time riding it. Check out our other bike reviews, $3,000 bikes. Thanks everybody, we'll see ya.